Good day all. We are sorry we are unable to join for worship this morning. There was various amounts of snowfall in, in Rockland and up in Orange where I am and we made the decision that it was best to keep everyone safe and to cancel worship this morning, especially as the snow seems to be continuing and lingering into today. But we did want to offer a short time of devotion um, this morning. And so we will lift up um, God's word to us this day. And so let us begin with uh, <clears throat> our epiphany text. Uh, the first one coming to us from uh, the book of Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephaph. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our second, second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. We will be reading um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes and the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time where the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring him word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of our Lord to whom we give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. O Spirit, as we come and gather before you each in our own place, we still ask that you might move among us, within us, that we might truly hear what you are saying to us this day, and that it might lead us out to share this great love that we have experienced in this world that you so love. Amen. After college, I was working in a biomedical lab, and uh, while there, I uh, took a few short-term mission trips down to New Orleans to help with the continued rebuilding after Katrina, only my second time down. Um, so we'd always go uh, the week in between Christmas and, and New Year's. We'd kind of come back New Year's Day or just thereafter. And so my second year down, we were supposed to leave the day after Christmas, and an impending snowstorm was coming up the coast. So we got the call Christmas night to be there bright and early the next morning so that we could pack all the vans and trucks and set out as 
we would normally do a 21 hour straight shot drive down. Um, and while that was still the plan, uh, we would be taking a different road, a different route. We would be going further out west first and then down in hopes to avoid the storm, making a very long ride much longer. As we would normally stop every three hours to switch drivers and fuel up and perhaps get a bite to eat, that meant more stops um, and making this long trip already longer. Though times it did feel like we were never going to make it, we did make it there, avoiding uh, almost all of the snow, and we made it safe and sound. But it makes me wonder uh, how the Magi were faced, right, with this uh, having to take a different route home. Uh, was their route longer? Uh, was it going to be safe? Um, maybe less safe? Uh, certainly the route that they chose to come was probably the most direct one following the star. They also would have taken one that was safe with more cities in between villages to stop in. Whereas um, perhaps on the route home, they were longer byways in between the villages and cities. And this could pose a risk for their safety as highway robbers, thieves, and the like would often hide out on these roads. Um, for unsuspecting victims. But yet they needed to choose this alternate route. And so have you ever had to choose an alternate route? Choose a different way home wherever, or wherever your destination might have been? Perhaps you were stuck in traffic somewhere and so you took the next exit and you got off and you looked at Google or your phone and you're like, okay, how do I get home from here? Or your flight was canceled and you needed to figure out a new way of how you were going to get where you needed to be. Maybe you were even just hiking or walking out in the woods and you saw a bear head and you realized, I need to change direction so that you don't run into this bear further down on the trail. Chances are good that we've all um, had, at some point had to take an alternate route. Plans change, things happen. We adapt. While we might not often like it, oftentimes, right, we can sometimes get frustrated or anxious and needing to change plans to find an alternate route. But just about all the time, we always find another way. For some who travel often, it even becomes like second nature to them. They almost expect or at least anticipate a change of plans. But perhaps what makes it a bit harder these past couple of years is that it's not just a traffic jam, a flight cancellation, or a bear in our path, but it's COVID in our midst still. There's something larger causing the change, more of a great unknown, and in a sense, we're all still trying to find our way home, find the comfort, security, safety of what we once knew. Even three years later, we are still longing for the way things used to be, or even trying to get back to that point as if our whole world didn't just change in an inst instant. And it's been a constant struggle for many, an exhausting one for just about everyone. Whether we like it or not, whether we've been warned in a dream or not, experience the, in the, we feel like we're experiencing the divine guiding us or not, we too are faced with a choice in some ways to go home by a different road. The Magi had a choice. Do they cave into their fears of the unknown and go back the familiar way, ultimately having to face Herod, who surely would have tortured them to get answers about this child? Or do they trust God and that God is leading them into the unknown, this different path home? And so the question is similar to us. Do we choose the path of comfort, fearing the unknown falling into false senses of security and safety, only to find ourselves tortured by the reality that it will never be the same again, never be the same normal we once knew? Or do we choose to lean into the unknown, to embrace where God might be leading us, not just us, our church individually, but the body of Christ, the collective church as a whole. 
We might not have been warned in a dream. We might not have felt, heard, seen, or um, believe the message from the divine. But we also don't, it doesn't mean we aren't being led into a different path. For the reality is what the collective church as a whole has been doing for the past number of years really isn't working. People are leaving the church, fleeing Christianity at alarming rates. It seems across cult church culture, across denomination, even the nom denominational churches that have prided themselves for years as the only ones still growing, that everyone thought were safe places the ones that many have tried to emulate throughout the years, these two are in decline. What we are doing isn't working in bringing the good news to the world. And in some ways, COVID has only highlighted that reality. And so perhaps it's time to go home a different way. It's time to embrace the path into the unknown, the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable, in hopes of not just returning home alive, but the hopes of life, new life, abundant life, in hopes of sharing the wonders with the far reaches of where we came from to those who have no clue who the Messiah is or what God is doing in this world, in hopes that it isn't just about our personal salvation, our personal relationship with God, but it's about the salvation of the world, the relationship of community of continuing to be the body of Christ in and for the world in this day and in the days to come. Change is inevitable. Finding a new path home a different way or whatever our destination may be is almost a guarantee at some point in our lives and in the life of the church. We're not the same as we were when the first house churches started in those earth, that first century. We're not the same uh, as when the church was persecuted, per persecuted heavily to death in the uh, early centuries before Constantine. We're not the same as when the Nicene Creed was debated, when Christianity became the official religion of Rome, when the church fractured into the Holy Roman Empire and the Eastern Orthodox churches or continued those fractures throughout the Reformation into different denominations. We're not the same as we were during the Great Awakenings of the 1800s or the Great Recession of the 1930s. And that's okay. Very few things stay the same in life. But the message, the gospel, the good news, the love of God through Christ Jesus is our constant. The hope of new life, abundant life still holds true. It's how we share that, proclaim it for the word, proclaim it in word and deed, how we live it out in our community. That is always changing. For the world around us is always changing. And while we can hold on to the foundations, the constants of our faith, our, some of our traditions, we need to be willing to enter the change, to take a different road home. Even if right now, like the Magi, we don't know what that path looks like, where it will take us, how long it might take, or how uncomfortable it will make us. We're to trust God is the one who is leading us where we need to go. Perhaps leading us to raise our voices as a community of faith, urging other churches and our presbytery to do the same, to raise awareness that the church cares about the loss of innocent lives in Gaza collectively calling for a cease fire as it is heartbreaking the amount of silence that the overall church has kept since this atrocity began. Not just raise our voices, but also take time to educate ourselves collectively as a congregation, as a community, on the history of the Israel-Palestine conflict, inviting those in from our larger community to participate as well. And to begin to form interfaith relationships with our Jewish and Muslim siblings of faith. Perhaps God is leading us to connect with our community on deeper levels. Maybe every couple of months, instead of our regular worship service, we hold Mission Day Sundays. We gather for a short devotional and go out into our community and clean up trails or go sing to residents at nursing homes. Or we gather in the parish house to write valentines to members who are, of our community who are incarcerated, making bread for our local services as thanks for the work that they do. 
packing midnight run kits or making no sew blankets for Center for Safety and Change. Perhaps God is leading us to ask not what will get more butts and pews, what will draw in crowds to see the sanctuary filled like it in its heyday, but asking, where are people hurting? What are the needs of the community around us? How can we meet them? And if we can't do it alone, who can we partner with to help meet these needs? Can we work with Proyecto Faro and the Stony Point Center to house a family or two of asylum seekers? Can we find ways to ensure affordable housing becomes a priority in Rockland County? In what ways can we help meet the needs of our community? For in doing so, we help provide life and a life abundant, this love of God to our community. So beloved, wherever God may be leading us like the Magi, let us embrace the new way, the different way, going home by another road. Amen. So let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for leading us, for always leading us. Sometimes, even if it is when we're kicking and screaming, for we don't always like change, we don't always like trying new things, but we pray that you give us strength to follow wherever you might be leading us. Realizing that this isn't our church, this isn't the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America's church, the PCUSA church, but that this is your church. And so, we ask that you illumine the path, that we might see where you would have us go, even if it's just one step at a time. Give us the strength and the courage to enter into the unknown, the new way, to your way, and to trust that you will see us through, that you will guide us home. Amen.